All right, Dr. Ed, good morning. Good morning, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, doing well. So we heard some big news yesterday. We had covered uh, some some news outlets talking about the FDA kind of authorizing a um, flu test at home, kind of similar to what uh, the COVID-19 tests were, right? Can you give us an overview of what that is? Yeah, so th th actually these flu tests are the same ones or very similar to the ones that we've been using for years, decades really, in, the, uh, in doctor's offices and hospitals. Um, mostly emergency rooms and urgent care centers to try to determine if somebody has influenza. I think the, the big issue has been recently, it's very difficult to tell the difference between COVID and the flu. And clearly the implications are, are different. The, the treatments are gonna be different. Um, so consequently, uh, I think it was very forward thinking of the FDA and, and of our medical uh, community to decide that we're going to put the decision making or at least the, the diagnostic tools, give them to people so that they can do that at home rather than having to go to urgent care centers. These tests are very reliable. Uh, they've been they've been proven over and over again to be extremely reliable for influenza A and influenza B. And again, we have therapy for that, you know, Tamiflu and, and a couple of other drugs that are available for that. So I, I think that this particular move is really an effort to, to help the community, to help uh, people decide at home what kind of infection they have so they're more informed when they seek their care uh, and, and physicians can take, a, can take a, a, a more direct path towards therapy without having to wait for these tests to be done and, and fill up emergency rooms or urgent care centers with people while they're waiting to find out what the results are. That's a good point. It doesn't necessarily take you out of the doctor's office completely because then you will need to, you know, find a, a treatment for, you know, your new diagnosis. However, it uh, is is aimed more, I would guess, to um, kind of make the line go a little bit quicker. Is that right? That's what it seems to be. I mean, that's the understanding that I have with it. And I certainly think that we're, we're already talking about deploying this type of thing with our transplant patients over here at Methodist Dallas. Um, so that uh, our clients who are spread out all over really about a three state area in, in, in Texas, New Mexico and Oklahoma, that we can um, we can have our clients go ahead and test themselves, call us. They don't necessarily have to come in and I can prescribe them by phone uh, or through, um, through uh, electronic prescription. I can prescribe them the appropriate therapy for whether they have COVID, they, you know, Paxlovid or an, another appropriate COVID agent, or give them a, uh, a prescription for Tamiflu if they have the flu. If they have both, then they're gonna need to be treated for both. And that's another thing that's, is it's possible for people to have both of these concurrently. And that's what uh, I was going to ask. These tests, do you know if they will show up concurrently? Yes, you have both of these things or just one. They're able to test uh, multiple items at once? Yes, they are. And that's been, it's, we certainly are, have that technology in the hospitals where we do what, what's called a respiratory panel and look for a variety of different respiratory viruses. I won't go through all of them, but um, it tells us which of those is positive. We have that for bacteria when we're looking for pneumonia. We call that a pneumonia panel, and it'll be a little checkbox next to the bacteria that, that are identified in that particular specimen. So in this one, it's really just going to be looking for influenza A, influenza B, and for uh, COVID. And so I, I think that'll be very valuable. Now, in the future, there may be tests uh, for the children that looks for RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, which was a big thing last summer, but a little bit less so right now. Definitely, that was uh, gonna be my next question is, do you think this opens the door to more at-home testing, whether in children in RSV, like you said, maybe a uh, strep throat or uh, other things that normally, you know, have, you see a wait time at those minute clinics, at those, um, you know, one-stop shop, you're having to wait for a little bit to, to get those. Do you see that this opens the door for future testing? I think that it probably will, um, and, and we'll have to see how that works. You may need a prescription for some of those, but I don't think that that'll be necessary in general. I, you're not going to need a prescription for these tests. So I, I believe that it does open the door for those for further testing of other viruses and bacteria that are relatively easy to get samples from, from a throat swab or a nasal swab. 
Um, certainly not for something that is a little bit more invasive that would require a more invasive thing like a blood culture. Those are not going to be available for the general public. But this would be very valuable. And, and as you said, it would really kind of uh, help thin up that line uh, of people having to wait in the urgent care centers, come in more informed with their test results, or call their physician or pediatrician and let them know, look, this is what we found. And, and you can, without even going to the doctor, possibly get treatment uh, more expeditiously, yeah. Absolutely, Dr. Ed. Thanks for joining us here and breaking down uh, the, the really cool points on this new FDA authorization. Uh, we look forward to chatting with you again soon. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. Absolutely.